Effortless photo composites with layers is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Now, this may take a little bit longer than 10 minutes or less, but it's going to begin now. Hello, everyone. Now, typically, we try to keep it between, between 10 to 15 minutes. The explanation of it is going to take longer than actually doing the process. So, with that being said, let me just dive it right in. So, this was the image, I think, back in 2012 or 20, 2012 or 2015, somewhere around there, that actually got me to do um, sport portraits for lynda.com, which is now LinkedIn Learning. All right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with stuff like this, and we're going to turn them into photos like this. All right? So let me get to my image. And the image we're going to start with is right here. And let me convert to original. So I'm going to start with a background layer. Now, when I come to edit, I've already, I know exactly where, I, I, I click this plus icon, I know exactly where this raw image is on my computer. So by clicking the plus icon, I browse my computer. I found it. I brought it in. Since I did it once, it's automatically going to be here throughout the rest of the tutorial. All right. Now, here's the raw image. I'm going to make the opacity better. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you this was a horrible photo shoot. I did screw up. I shot it on white, which I usually don't do. However, um, I didn't have a chance to retake it, so we're going to have to repair the image first and then apply the cool special effects. All right, so here's my son, Alec. Must have been 15 at the time. Here we go. All right, so I have the image set. Now, before I start to extract it and do all these cool things to it, I do have to repair it. So I'm going to come in, take the highlights way down. Take the blacks way down the tone. There we go. And of course, I am going to bring the whites way down. So you can see, if I hit the Instagram right up here, you'll notice, look at that. It is a very, very high key image. That's not that big of a deal on the shoulder. I just want to make sure it stays off his face. All right. So I did that quick. I'm going to come down to super contrast. And this side of his face, just want to enhance it a little bit better. Bring down some of that shine. Good. Now I have it. I am going to mask it. And the reason why I'm going to mask it is I only want to apply it to the damaged side of the face. So this is a little bonus right now. There we go. There, now I got it where I'm looking. All right, good. So now that I have this set, I am going to come in under skin and I'm going to apply a generous amount, which I normally don't do on men. But in this case, because we're going to apply a rough look to it, I'm going to apply a generous amount of skin softening. Let's see if there's any shine. Got it. Close it. Now, when I reopen another instance of it, everything will be back, set back to default. I do want to do skin, um, they call it defects, let's call it skin uh, blemish removal, all right? Now, I did it. The only thing is right towards his nose, only because I've done this before, I'm noticing it took out part of the nostril, so I want to erase the effect just right here. So I'm going to bring back that nostril. There we go. All right, so now I have it. So imagine if we started, which I wish we did, right at this point. Oh, it was two of me. I wish we started right at this point. Now that I have it set, I'm on the layer of the athlete. And what I want to do, not portrait background removal, I want to do background removal. Now, the reason for that is I have the lacrosse stick in the scene. So I wanted to make sure that it takes the main image 
which is going to be the lacrosse player and the stick itself. So here it comes. That's what I want. Remove it. And once I remove it, we're going to knock out the background. And now he's on the, the, the gray background. Right now, it looks totally fake. That's okay. We're going to slowly build it up. Um, I am going to come over here to the brush. And in between, I want to erase the background in between the net. But I don't want the strength to be 100%. I'm going to dial it down. And then gradually come in just so we can start punching a hole through that to where we're not going to remove the net itself. I want to remove the white. Now, there's other ways of doing this, but for what we're going to do, this is the fastest way. And it's going to make sense in a moment. All right. So I have that set. I'm going to do a little more. Good. All right, let's check it out. All right, there we are. We have our athlete onto the background. This uh, halo around him and stuff like that. I could go in and, and really tweak it, but we want to work on proficiency. That's not going to make a difference, and I'll show you why. We're going to take this bottom layer. I'm going to duplicate it. Now we're going to apply what's called a sandwich effect. I'm going to take it to the top. This time... Instead of normal, let's try overlay or soft light. Here's overlay. Here's soft light. You know what? I like soft light. Good. But what I don't want is I don't want the effect on his face. So I'm going to take a brush, erase, and I'm going to come in and just paint on his face to get rid of that effect. So everywhere else, everywhere else, I do want it to appear. But I don't want the texture on his face. And just a little bit here. Good. And I'm, going, I'm pressing the X key as a shortcut to bounce between either paint or erase. Or erase. All right, good. So I have that set. And again, right now, it's not looking, it's not meant to look real yet. We're going to get to that point. All right, so, so far, here I am, layer, 100%. It's on top. I have that set. I need to bring in another image. And this image, we'll leave it at 50%. I just want to move it into place. Now, you can see why. Let's move it down underneath the main image. You can see why that, that <clears throat> the net, why we brushed it out so it could punch a hole through and you can see the background image. All right, that looks good. But let's come over here and remove the background. And in a moment, here it comes. And once it removes the background, we're going to further... Do a little masking. So I found the background and the subject. I removed it. And there we go. Good. Now that I removed it, I am going to come back again with a brush. Erase. I'm going to keep the strength down low because actually I'll move the strength up a little bit higher for the bottom part. I don't want this down in here. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. And, and that looks good. Now, technically, and actually, you know what? I am going to do it while I'm here. I could take this. And I do want to make it a little bit bigger. Now, if you're noticing this image, this way, way, way back in the day, I saw this with uh, Joe Namath. Um, and if, uh, there's a really cool football photo. That's what inspired me to do this. All right, so here we are back with the masking brush. Erase the effect. But this time I want to go a little bit lower. With the strength. And just come in. 
knock out some of it here. There we have it. All right. Get a little bit more and keep going to make this, the lacrosse stick, appear a little bit more. But again, just for the sake of time, I just want to show you the concepts of what we just did. We start with the background layer. When we duplicate the background layer, we're going to sandwich it in between the, the composites that we want to work with. So now that I have this now, here's the thing. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish we had the ability to flatten the layers. And that's something we're talking to our engineering team on. Because if I could flatten the layers at this point, I would create a copy of all the flattened layers and then continue with what I'm about to do. Since we don't have that ability, what we're going to do is we're going to export at this point. I'm going to export it. And I'm going to name this, let's say, uh, lacrosse version one, erase me. Why did I put erase me? Now I know that when I store this back into the folder that the image came from, underscore complete. I'll know to erase it because it's only stage one. Export. Now, once it exports, it's going to take all the layers, flatten it for me. Now it's one image. Now I can go and start creating a little bit more light and contrast. Now, because, because we import, or we put the underscore complete, in the folder, I, I imported it <coughs> in Illumina. Notice it automatically appeared. So I don't have to go searching for it. So here it is. Now, edit. And two steps I want to do. Develop. And I want to darken the overall image. And all I'm focusing on right now is the bottom half of the image. So linear gradient, bring it up to here. Ooh, look what that did. Look, now you saw we're painting with light. I got that set. And then, vignette, choose the subject. And I want to further enhance the light. And then, add inner light. Right about there. Now, let's see if it makes a difference. Look at that. Good. And now, to finish it off, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to apply a name. Now, where did I get the name? You'd have to use a graphics program, Canva, um, Photoshop, GIMP, any of those that is actually a graphics program is where you would create the graphics. Make it a D, make it a PNG, and then you can apply it like we are right here. All right, let me just straighten up a little bit. We have it. All right, there we are. And then, oh, wait, wait, one second. Once we're done, export. And now I'm just gonna, let's say um, we'll call this. Um, Nice. Here we go. We'll call it Alec Videlli. Complete. Export it. Now it's going to bring it right into the folder forming. And sure enough, here it is. Alec Vanelli. Alec Vanelli complete. There's the image. Now what I would do is go back over to here. Right click. And move that to trash, because now we don't need it anymore. And we have it all set. And there's our finished product. All right? So key takeaways that I really want you to focus on is this. Let's see. This was here. Image. There we go. Is, is this. Here are the key takeaways. When we did this, we're creating a sandwich. All right, we're taking the first layer, I'm going to hide this, the very, very first layer with all the texture, 
And we're going to duplicate it, bring it to the top. And very important, once it's here, this is where we make sure that we use the proper um, overlay. So it's going to merge with the soft light here. It's going to merge nice with the lower, the bottom layer. Now, what's cool about doing the way we just did is I can come back here to this image. Now, notice the top layer. If I hit edit or history, nothing appears. But if I hit this layer, this is where we did all the uh, repair to the image. I can come back in again. And let's say I just think it's a little too bright. Is I can do that again. I can come in here. There we go. Ooh, now look at the contrast now. Too much. Right about there. Four. After, yep, look at that. I like that much better. And now everything just falls right into place. Now, here's an issue. From here, I guess we could try this. Um, let's take the exposure way down. Now, see, it's not going to do what I want it to do. What I was hoping it could do was... Bottom layer right here. Look, I'll bring that all the way up. But notice, again, I really need to be on the layer that's compressed because that's really not doing too much for us. That's why we exported. Let me erase that. That's why we had to export it to a temporary image and then continue and apply it to the rest. All right? So there you have it. Now, this used to take me a little over 30 minutes per image. Now, imagine if you had 70 athletes you had to do. That would take forever. The fastest I've done this and recreated it was just under four minutes. And that's because I had all the details and the, tool, um, the assets in place. Brought it in. Um, sandwich. Did what we just saw. We just did. Bring in the name. Done. Go on to the next one. This is a custom type. We can't batch process this. I, I guess what we could do if we wanted to batch process it is to apply the background layer. You know, leave the background layer the way it is and then hit preset. And what the preset could do, nope, see, so you couldn't do that because, um, I'm sorry, what, what I was thinking of was if we applied a preset, it would duplicate the background layer. But that's not going to do anything for us. So the easiest thing to do is leave it, the background layer, the way it is, and build it the way we just did by importing two of those raw files, the front image and, of course, the back image, duplicate it, and then we're good to go. All right? So once again, composite, working with layers, try it. It's, it's, it's going to take time for you to wrap your head around it. Once you do, you can see all the incredible uh, features you could do with this technique. All right? Well, guys, if you're here, please stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. And if you're watching this online, see if I have it right here. Yep, you could join Coffee Break through this link right here if you want to participate in the After Coffee Break, which we'll be spending about 45 minutes. You could ask me any questions from this technique to... Anything dealing with um, photography or any tech support that you need. All right? So thanks most, so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next Coffee Break.